were commissioned last uh, Ash Wednesday. Among the eight, actually there are uh, five Franciscan friars, two Diocesan priests, and one uh, missionary priest from Thailand. The five uh, present during Ash Wednesday were three uh, Franciscan friars, and me as one Diocesan priest, and uh, the missionary priest from Poland who are now uh, assigned in Cagayan de Oro in the Divine Mercy Shrine there. And the only from Isaias is only from Mindanao and three Franciscan friars from the Sol. So I, I would like to share with you my prepared uh, uh, reflection. Praise be Jesus Christ, the face of our Father's tender mercy to all of us. I come here as a missionary of mercy. As Pope Francis said, we are a sign of the Church's maternal solitude for the people of God. In enabling them to enter the profound richness of this mystery so fundamental to the faith. I also come here as a catechist and not as a theologian. A catechist has the mission and that is to put people not only in touch but also in communion and intimacy with Jesus Christ. I am here with you, my dear fellow technical directors. I'm inviting you to reflect the church as a mother according to the vision of Pope Francis. I discern that this point would make an impact on our technical field in this era of new evangelization. For us to embrace our church as truly our mother, we have to understand the vision of Pope Francis about the sinner. Therefore, there is a need for us to focus on the emphasis of Pope Francis about sinfulness. For he, a person, is a child of God, and when he is in the state of sin, he is being in shame and at the same time being wounded. Point number one, shame in sinfulness. The mind of Pope Francis about shame. First, in the book, the name of God is mercy. So this is the book. The name of God is mercy by Pope Francis. He recalled the book of the prophet Ezekiel, where in chapter 16, the prophet speaks of shame. And shame is a grace when one feels the mercy of God. Second, during our meeting with him before our commissioning, Pope Francis discussed shame. He said, I would like to recall an aspect which is seldom mentioned, but which instead is determinant. Shame. It is not easy to place ourselves before another man, especially knowing that he represents God and confess our sins. We feel ashamed both of what we have done and of having to confess it to another. Shame is an intimate feeling which influences our personal life and requires the confessor to assume an attitude of respect and encouragement. So often, shame silences us. Gestures, gestures speak. This is not the message of Pope Francis. From the very first pages, the Bible speaks of shame. After the sin of Adam and Eve, the sacred author immediately noted that the eyes of both were opened, and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed thick leaves together and made themselves aprons. The first reaction of this shame is that of hiding themselves from God. There is also another passage of Genesis which strikes me, according to Pope Francis. It is the story of Noah. 
We all know it, but we rarely recall the episode when we see become drunk. In the Bible, Noah is considered a just man, even though he is not without sin. His drunkenness helps us understand how weak even he was to the point of failing in his own dignity, a fact which scripture expresses with an image of nakedness. Though his sons, however, take his garment to cover him so as to restore his fatherly dignity. This passage makes me think of how important our role is in the confessional, according to Pope Francis. Before us is a person who is naked, and also a person who is unable to speak and does not know what to say. With his weaknesses and his limitations, with the shame of being a sinner who is often unable to express it, let us not forget before us is not a sin, but a contrite sinner. A sinner who does not want to be like this, but who cannot help it. A person is anxious to be heard and forgiven. A sinner who promises to no longer want to be separated from the Father's house, and who, with a little strength he or she can muster, wants to do everything possible to live as a child of God. Thus, we are not called to judge with a sense of superiority as if we were immune from sin. On the contrary, we are called to act like Shem and Japheth, the sons of Noah, who took a garment to shield their father from shame. Being a confessor in accordance with the heart of Christ is the equivalent of shielding sinners with the garment of mercy, so they may no longer be ashamed and may recover the joy of their filial dignity and may also know where to find me and the goal. My dear brothers, permit me also to share my mind on shame. In these times, there are so many walangiya. The teaching on the sense of shame has a great categorical value in this era of new evangelization. It is good to be anchored in a value that is so dear to us Filipinos, Ia, or shame. We have learned, we have to learn and form a habit in our own selves and teach our children to have the sense of shame. If we have done something wrong, the sense of shame leads us to feel sorry because we wounded our dignity as children of God. Without the sense of shame, we cannot fully trust and seek the mercy of God. So this is no longer in my prepared uh, notes. I would like to share with you my experience, which also has an impact to me personally, personally as a priest. You know, when I was a seminarian, there may meron tayo sa amin na lumabas kasi nag-asawa siya. Nakabuntis. Pero, mabuti rin sa kanya kasi hindi rin siya nag-stay sa amin tayo sis. Sumama siya doon sa sa nabuntis niya. Yung mga parents ng nabuntis niya nandun sa pila ng tatrabaho sa itali. Nakahiga uh, yung family kasi yung anak nila at asawa ng pari. Mabuti rin at yung pari pinanindigan niya rin yung anak nila. When I was in Rome, I visited Milan and I stayed there for three days. They acknowledged, they recognized the missionary of mercy ako. Pero, na-feel ko ang pagtanggap nila at ang saya nila. Yung family. Kasi yun naman ang stigma dito sa atin. Yung family, na naling 
สบายเลยอ่าพิยาสินะเโรอ่าเรนั่งเสบสินะก็สบายยังปาริปินยันโปรแกรมซีสตั้งดิสเพนเซชั่นนั่งทัชเองมุสลิมเพื่อนเพื่อนเมื่อเสบาริสเตอร์ทุกวันนี้ที่นี่ขอให้ฉันถามทุกคนว่าพระเจ้าตั้งเสริมการสอบเสริม Monday, Thursday. But I would like to ask you, when was the sacrament of forgiveness established by Jesus? We you know. We you know that the Holy Eucharist was established on Holy Thursday. But do we know in our catechism where did Jesus establish the sacrament of forgiveness? Yes, it's true. Yes, the answer is on Easter Sunday. It was on the evening of that very day when the apostles gathered together because they were so afraid. I would like to to read this. So when it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and when the doors were shut, where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood in their midst and said to them. Peace be with you. And when he had said this, he showed them both his hands and his side. The disciples then rejoiced when they saw the Lord. So Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father sent me, I also sent you. And when he had said this, he breathed them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, your sins have been forgiven. If you retain the sins of any, you have been retained. John chapter 12, 20, verse 19 to 22. Perhaps the apostles felt the sense of shame in facing Jesus because they abandoned him during his passion and death. Yet instead of admonishing them, the first words of Jesus to them were, Peace be with you. Then Jesus showed to them his wounds. The apostles rejoiced, and the execution of the sacrament of reconciliation followed. Peace in the hearts of the apostles was the needed disposition to spread the joy of the gospel. Number two point. Sinfulness is woundedness. Seemingly, there is a paradigm shift from seeing sin as a stain into seeing sin as a wound. In the scriptures, Jesus said, He came not for those who are good, but for the sinners. He did not come for those who are healthy and who do not need the doctor, but for the sick. The catechetical emphasis of Pope Francis Seeing sin as a wound in this era of new evangelization is revealed in his book, The Name of God is Mercy. Pope Francis said, Humanity is wounded, deeply wounded. Either it does not know how to cure its wounds, or it believes that it's not possible to cure them. And it's not a question of social ills or people wounded by poverty, social exclusion or one of the many slaveries of the third millennium. Relativism wounds people too. All things seem equal. All things appear the same. Humanity needs mercy and compassion. Our church as mother of the wounded. The face of a church that does not reproach man for their fragility and their wounds, but treats them with the medicine of mercy. And so Francis' vision of the church, the church as a field hospital, treatment is given above all those who are wounded, a church that warms people's hearts 
with his closeness and nearness. You know, now in our catechesis, especially in the priest of the pre-Jordan catechesis, uh, we teach, we teach in our mudyo, ang kasalanan ay mancha. Diba? Mancha sa ating, sa ating kanilang. But here, in the system of four crisis now, ang kasalanan ay suka. Tapos, yung ecclesiology niya, ang simbahan natin ay sa field hospital. The Pope is serious about this. A day before our commissioning as missionary of mercy, Pope Francis met with us and said, I will read again. First of all, I wish to remind you that in this mystery, you are called to express the motherhood of the church. The church is mother because she always generates new children in the faith. The church is mother because she nourishes the faith. And the church is mother also because she offers God's forgiveness, regenerating a new life, the fruit of conversion. We cannot run the risk of that a penitent that perceive the maternal presence of the church, <clears throat> which welcomes and loves the child mind. Should this perception fail due to our legitimacy, it would do serious harm in the first place to the faith itself, because it would impede the penitent from feeling included in the body of Christ. Moreover, it would greatly limit the penitent's sense of belonging to a community. Instead, we are called to be the living expression of the church, which as mother welcomes whoever <coughs> approaches her, conscious that through the church one is joined to Christ. Entering the confession now, let us always remember that it is Christ who welcomes, it is Christ who listens, it is Christ who forgives. It is Christ who grants peace. We are His ministers, and we are always the first to be in need of being forgiven by Him. Therefore, whatever sin may be confessed, or if the person dare not voice it, but makes it understood, it is sufficient. Every missionary is called to remember his own existence as a sinner and to humbly act as a channel of God's mercy. I admit to you as a brother that the memory of that confession on September 21, 1953, which redirected my life, is a source of joy for me. What did that priest tell me? I don't recall. I remember only that he smiled at me. Then I do not know what happened. But he welcomed me like a father. Now, uh, one impact also that my experience with all is uh, the euro. When some anti-Kenyo invited me to go to Germany. You know, May, 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 doon sa, nung break pa yung ako, meron kami yung katikis. Yung katikis na yon after one year, uh, may, ano, ano ba yun? May order ride. Pa-German is siya. Sila yung nag-invite sa akin na from, from, from Rome to Dako ng Germany. Then, when I was there, uh, tumulog yung luha ko kasi iba yung naiisip ko, yung stigma pa ng mga babae natin noon na parang nakakahiya na punta doon para magpakasal sa mga Germans. Na iyak ako kasi yung, yung husband niya, siya ang sumundo sa akin pa suri doon sa Sichela. Sinundo niya ako. At mahal na mahal siya ng German niya ng asawa. Nag-iba yung tingin ko. Mahal ng mga Germans yung mga asawa nila ng Pilipinas. Medyo tumulo yung luha ko. Tumulo talaga. 
Kasi malungkot na kanilang lugar. Sa countryside, maraming lungkot. Countryside. Wala kang kilala na doon ka. 27 years na siya doon. But then, when they organized this mass, doon sa kanilang 8th century church, na for the past years walang pari at once a, once a month lang sila minimisahan kasi wala na konti ng pari doon sa kanila sa Germany. Lahat ng mga Pilipino doon sa community pumunta. Inorganize nila na din sa ako. Most of them, yun, yung stigma na pumunta doon because of this may over uh, right. Yung nakita ko masaya sila. Mahal sila na kanilang mga sama. Na lumul, napapaiyak yung mga husbands nila kasi maraming Pilipino ng simpa. Kaunti na yung kaunti na yung nagsisimpa sa kanila. Kaunti yung pari. Yung mga matatanda na nagsisimpa. Pupuno ng simpahan mga Pilipino. So I told them, you know, noon, parang parang suka o parang, parang sa shame na nandito kayo. Pero ito siguro yung gusto ng Diyos. Na pumunta kayo dito sa malami at malungkot na lugar na ito para may nitinig nyo ang pananampalataya ng Pilipino ang um, lugar na ito. Ang galak ng pananampalataya ng Pilipino. No? I remember when we were in Vietnam and we, uh, we discussed about mission in Nairo, in Kutu, doon, kita. You know, maraming refugees And you know, most of the refugees mga Islam, yung presence ng Pilipino doon, dapat natin i-claim. Magpapapalansin ng Euro. 20, 10 years from now, baka maging mga Islam ang buong Euro para sa mga refugees. Yung, yung mga Pilipino natin, kailangan rin nila yung companion ng mga pari para sa communities nila. So it seems like the moon ang pupunta nila doon sa shin. But then, we can embrace it sa grace of God. It leads us into mission. Diyan nila pakita ng Panginoon ang pagiging nanay ng ating simpahan. I have to conclude this. The church as a mother, according to the vision of Pope Francis, would make an impact on our catechetical field in this era of evangelization. The catechetical emphasis on shame and sinfulness and woundedness enriches our appreciation of the maternal solitude for the people of God. It highlights Jesus Christ, our peace and joy the face of the tender mercy of our Father. This is so profound and true every time we go to the sacrament of confession. We have to turn our eyes to Mother Mary, our Mother of Mercy, the star of evangelization. In order to learn, she witnessed all the shame and sinfulness, the wounds, the forgiveness, and the tender mercy of God. I would like to share with you before I will we pray the hello in me. My appointment as missionary of mercy. I would like to be just read with you. I would, dear, dear missionary of mercy, this letter coming from our Shishatrino, Ezekielia of the Pontifical Council for the Promotion of the Evangelization. Pope Francis has granted you the faculty to soul for the duration of the Jubilee year those sins reserved to the Holy See. By disposition of the Holy Father, 
this fact continues to be understood as being limited exclusively to the following things. Number one, profaning the Eucharistic species by taking them away or keeping them for a sacrilegious purposes. Number two, use of physical force against the Roman culture. Number three, ito para sa ating mga pari. Absolution of an accomplished in a sin against the six commandments of the Decalogue. Ang kasama mo sa paggawa ng kasalanan, the six commandments, at ang kumisa sa iyo, at inabsolve mo, as we serve to the Holy See. Number four, a direct violation against the sacramental seal by a confessor. I am certain that you will be a joyful proclaimer of divine mercy and a faithful dispenser about all the sacramental consolation. I may take the opportunity to express our gratitude for your willingness to undertake such an opportunity, important ministry, and that you will be. Okay. Gusto ko rin ni share sa inyo, paano ko natili? Actually, the invitation is for all. Akala ko marami kami. Kasi, it's, it's in the internet. <laughs> so, of course, minuksan, in-announce yun. Doon, nakita ko yung website ng, ng Pontifical Council for the, for the Promotion of the Evangelization of Vatican. Nag-fill up ako. Okay, hindi ko pa nakausap yung bishop ko. Kung nilagay ko doon, yung ano, yung poster ng, ng National Catechetical Month natin. Simple. <laughs> Bisto yung endorsement ni Bishop uh, Robbie Lasso namin. Pero nagtilap ako doon. Two weeks after, nag-email yung Vatican. Please give us the endorsement of your Bishop. So, pinigay ko yung endorsement. By October, yun, pinapaprocess na ako. I have to go to Rome for the commissioning. Akala ko marami kami. Kasi lahat ng matalos ng katikitikal directors ito kay Facebook. Sa Facebook ko lang naman yung nakita. <coughs> Siguro yung totoo. Siguro sabi ng isang mati, men are called but you are chosen. Siguro para sa iyo yun. Kaya lang mo. Nakita niya. Merong mga bishak na. Medyo na na surprise. That's the way Pope Francis do things. <laughs> Para sa lahat. <laughs> hindi na dumaan sa papalunch ko. Direkta. Yan yung pamamaraan. So, you, you may see it, but I would like to pray with you the Hail Holy Queen. Let us all pray. Hail Holy Queen, Mother of Mercy.